And hello, welcome everyone. Welcome back to our video uh, of open form heat transfer. So in the last video, we we're talking about some of the uh, inherent instability within the buoyant pimple form solver. So we're trying to find out, you know, how can we try and make this thing work? Okay, is open form, uh, I mean heat transfer in general, for heat transfer in general, is open form even capable of doing, you know, such uh, simulations? So uh, how do we like proceed? So one of the, the best things to do besides uh, trial and error is to take a look at the online. So if you go online, you will see um, you will see a heat transfer uh, cases being solved in OpenFOAM, especially using LES modeling. And what kind of cases are we talking about? This is a heat transfer in turbulent uh, jet impingement. So what is this uh, jet impingement case like? Okay, jet impingement. Okay, let me get this uh, out. Uh, jet impingement is basically you have some sort of a flow, some sort of flow from a pipe, and it's like a, like a garden hose. So you, have, you have something like a garden hose. Okay, uh, you have a garden hose and then it's spraying some sort of fluid uh, onto a surface. Okay, it's a garden hose and it's like spraying fluid at some sort of surface. And what happens after that? Uh, there will be all sorts of uh, you know, bounce off the fluid. It will start bouncing off the surface and splashing everywhere. I mean, this is roughly what... Uh, jet impingement is it can be some sort of you know hot air and you're blasting a surface with hot air or or it could be a flame or, or I, I don't know maybe uh, not not quite a flame but you know that there's a there's a stream of fluid and it's hitting a surface and you know the the way with this is that uh, when your mesh is small you'll be able to um, capture a lot of velocity fluctuations because there's a sudden change in direction of the fluid very much like what you see here there's a there is sort, sort, sort of a hose and it's spraying in onto a surface but in this case the surface is perforated it is full of holes so the the fluid will change direction very suddenly because of these abrupt changes in the geometry so it this does show that open foam is capable of doing heat transfer simulations of this sort so uh how uh, how then can we uh, try and emulate that? How can, can we try and you know, copy this so that we don't have to do uh, simulation after simulation again and again? Well, if you see this uh, case, of course I'll post this in the description. Is, uh, you'll notice that this case actually uses buoyant Poussinesque pimple foam. So under uh, this research gate, uh, this is a conference paper by uh, these two uh, people here. Uh, I don't really know how to pronounce the name, so I won't even try. So, but it's from Indian Institute of Technology, so they're very brilliant people. Uh, yeah, and you know, yeah, they're very brilliant people. Uh, and basically, uh, so we we have we have this sort of jet impingement case. We we see the geometry. So there's some inflow again on the impingement plate, as you can see here. So there's some uh, some spray of fluid onto a plate. Okay, computation, uh, uh, you see that there's a second order implicit scheme, blah, 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 blah. And the solver of choice is actually buoyant Boussinesque pimple foam. It says it's a finite volume method uh, transient solver using the pimple algorithm, uh, pimple symbol algorithm. That's what, uh, I mean, simple and piezo algorithm. That makes the pimple algorithm. So, um... So this is what the what the uh, uh, solver can do, and we we seen that okay from literature it is possible to to get uh, to get open form to solve this really uh, this really uh, weird not not weird geometries geometries where you know the velocity will change suddenly. So one uh, at one point it's uh, the the fluid velocity is here, then suddenly it has to change direction very sharp. There's a sharp change in velocity. I think that's the word. Sharp change in velocity. It's just like over here, you have sharp change in velocity. Okay, so apparently buoyant Boussinesque pimple foam is able to handle that. Alright, so um, 
Of course, uh, my our end goal is not of course, of course not to use air as the, uh, the, the the fluid that we want to use. It's actually dalthum. But anyway, air, as you can see here, air actually gives you, uh, it gives you some sort of uh, ability to see where where everything is coming from, where where the instability is. If you actually use dalthum, so I go to Salon Poly Heat Exchanger here. We go to Daltham, okay, Salon Mesh Gen, okay, uh, the other one, this case you're seeing here is Air. Okay, this case you're seeing here is Air. Uh, I mean, the case that you're seeing in Paraview here is Air. This one, in particular, is actually Daltham. Okay, so this is the, these are the coefficients for Daltham oil. The other one is for air, because uh, you see in the thermal physical properties, you can see that all of these are properties of air. The mu is this much, the parental number is this much. So I'm not going to touch that too much. That is for air, and this is for Dow Therm. So yeah, we want a heat exchanger oil, a liquid in our heat exchanger. Uh, that's normally... I mean, for most cases, you probably want to use liquid. I mean, for example, in a factory or what, you use water in your heat exchanger to cool things off, or even a heat transfer oil. So that's why uh, we are using Daltherm in this case. Okay, so uh, that's that's one of the uh, things that uh, just to take note of. So uh, I wanted to run a Daltherm a Daltherm case for this uh, thing. So, okay, and you will see also again that there, there, is a, there is instability within this and it will crash actually much faster than air. Okay. So maybe within two time steps, it will, the whole solver will crash. So you can see the current number mean the mean current uh the max current number is jumping like crazy. Yeah, see, uh it saw the solver crashed within three time steps. So actually with air, I mean this uh I was testing a lot behind the scenes. Uh using air uh you were able to you know um somehow somehow uh have more time steps so you can actually it's much easier to diagnose the problem for air as compared to uh, this Daltham. Because Daltham, you only have like maybe one or two time steps to play with and the whole solver crashes. So it's very hard to see what's going on here. So that was the advantage of using air. And that's why I used the air as a fluid. So this was uh, you know, done behind the scenes, did a lot of testing, trial and error, and you know I found air to be working. So this is for Daltham. Again, it doesn't work. Okay. And pretty much all the boundary conditions are the same. Okay, we have the uh, inlet, outlets, and everything. Okay. Okay, we have the we have the inlets and outlets again. It's supposed to enter in at five hundred Kelvin. Outlet supposed to be zero gradient, or this one's inlet outlet, of course, uh, which is actually a zero gradient. A hybrid boundary condition that combines zero gradient with fixed value depending on the direction of flow. But I'm not going to touch this today. Okay, again, all the tubing has the same boundary condition, and you can see it crashes. Okay, so then for some reason, uh, this crashes. So based on what uh, we saw in literature, we can try using the Boyan Businesk pimple foam. Okay, I'm not going to go through the boundary conditions one by one because that would actually take up a lot of time. All of this will be posted on GitHub. There should be boundary conditions you are pretty familiar with. Uh, and they are similar to whatever I used in the heat exchanger. So uh, I'm not going to go through that for the sake of time. Okay, uh, the concepts are there. Okay, uh, so uh, when we diagnose the problem, uh, yeah. We see that you know probably using Boyan Pusinesk pimple foam is a good. There's a good chance that it could work because it has been uh, used before by other people. So I would try and use it here. 
So I see this, uh, I'm going to go back. Uh, okay, I'm going to go to buoyant pimple foam and all right, I've already done this uh, behind the scenes and you can see that uh, and I've done it for at least to 0 0.15 seconds. You can see on for this case here, for this case here, you will it will crash within uh, less than 0 0.02 seconds, right? 0 0.02 seconds, this whole thing crashes. But for this this case, when we run the buoyant Boosin SKP and Perform, okay, this is a different solver. Okay, so you can see that uh, crashes within uh, 0 0.0105 seconds. You see buoyant Boosin SKP and Perform. For some reason, using pretty much the same boundary conditions, this thing actually works. So you can see it's solving for several time steps and even at the time step of 0 0.1491 this whole thing actually works. So I'm going to stop this for now and I, I want to uh, let you take a look at the results from this because it's uh, pretty interesting. So this is the, the one that failed, this is the air one and uh, I want to show you the Businesque one. So this is the Businesque one and Okay, so this is the pressure of the whole uh, thing. So let's give you a slice plot. Again, we're going to use a Z normal. I uncheck the show plane. Oopsie, I'll delete this. And I'll go show you the temperature. And take a look at the temperature. Uh, in this uh, buoyant Businesk pimple foam, you never see the temperature actually exceed 500 Kelvin. Okay, of course, the in the first case, I was actually using uh, air as the working fluid. Uh, but you can see that uh, there's no reason for the air to suddenly increase in temperature. Okay, there's no reason for the air to suddenly increase in temperature and you have those little spots. Because the, the pressure, there's no, there's no associated pressure increased in those areas. Right, so thermodynamically, we should only expect increases in temperature when you know the pressure increases a lot. This is based on the ideal gas law. And for here, it does it does not uh, exhibit. I mean, for the for the air case, it doesn't exhibit the behavior because you don't see that uh, you don't see those hot spots in uh, those spots of high pressure. You only see high sp spots of high temperature and high velocity. So something is a little amiss. Okay, so you can see over here the the uh, solver is stable okay. uh, you can see here that the solver is stable and uh, there are, you don't see any hot spots over here you don't see spots of high temperature going along the way okay and you can see that uh, as the the case evolves uh, you can see that the the sphere here is getting cooler you don't again you keep going on you don't see you don't see tiny hot spots of uh, of high temperature, and you don't see any of the temperature actually exceeding five hundred uh, Kelvin. So this is how the how the uh, whole case should behave. Now the boundary conditions, of course, are slightly different because uh, I I found it very hard to get the wall heat flux temperature working for the Business case. So I just I just changed it to. Um, a fixed value as you can see here okay there's a fixed value so the fixed value here will be about 300 Kelvin the other side will be uh, heating up of course uh, let me change the hot side tubing I didn't change my hot side tubing oh great my hot side tubing is also 300 it should be 500 but okay that's beside the point um, it just shows you that you know the, the the case is stable and if I take a look at the velocity here you can see that there are hot spots in the velocity so to speak so the higher spots of where you have this uh, so-called uh, higher velocity but you you don't see this uh, uh, you don't see this uh, actually uh, causing the coron number to blow up exponentially or causing the whole solver to crash now, uh, are these in logical places? Um, well, over here you see that there's an abrupt change in velocity because you know the the shape changes very suddenly. So 
maybe because uh, you know the velocity changes suddenly you will have this uh, so called hot spots of uh, of uh, this uh, u magnitude like you see like like uh, what you see over here uh, as the as the uh, as the fluid goes down here into the uh, into the curved pipe around the bend around the bend is where you get the the highest degree of you know uh, high velocity and uh, also when you see at the sharp edges over here you will see that uh, you see very very small uh, bits of high velocity where it is near the edges and around sharp corners because the velocity uh, direction has to change very suddenly so uh, possibly that the I mean the the shape changes very suddenly so probably over there is where you have all these high velocity you can see over here this very sharp corners is where it will usually happen uh, and over here as well so this, these are pretty logical places where whenever you see a sharp corner you will see this uh, increase in velocity all right but uh, so this is actually pretty physically uh, physically uh, realizable but uh, you won't see this uh, sharp increases in temperature anywhere along here all right you, you, you don't see this sharp increase in temperature anywhere along here so you can see that you know a uh, buoyant businesque pimple foam uh, is actually a workable solver to to get uh, to solve for all these sharp corners okay to solve for all these sharp corners and let me show uh, show you what what the case looks like and what you need to take note of all right so uh, you should notice that uh, first thing first the alpha t uh, the boundary conditions and these dimensions they'll be different for buoyant pimple foam and buoyant businesque pimple foam so you take a look at here uh, let me show you alpha t yeah, alpha t okay so for some reason yeah uh, the alpha t here is uh, is will have these dimensions but the alpha t here will have the dimensions in meter square per second because this this uh, this kind of has a uh, um, I think it's a corrected for density or mass okay so that there is that uh, I think this is actually rho times this alpha t okay this one is uh, I mean the thermal diffusivity or turbulent thermal diffusivity the the normal uh, dimensions here are usually in meter square per second all right normally when we talk about you new know, theoretical der derivations okay alpha and alpha t all right alpha and alpha t so this is the turbulent one they should be in meter square per second dimensions so this is meter square so you have uh, meter to the power of two and seconds to the minus one now uh for this year this is kind of unusual for alpha t again why is this so it's probably because you have rho alpha t and you see rho is actually meter uh, kg per meter cube kg per meter cube and then you have meter square per second then you multiply them together so you have kg okay per meter and second so you have uh, mass dimensions you have one uh, length dimensions minus one and time dimension minus one so that's what you see here mass is one uh, length minus one time minus one so these are the dimensions you must take note of when you change from buoyant pimple foam to buoyant businesque pimple foam so the other two things that uh, you need to take note of are p and prgh these are the pressure again it's because uh, there is a factor of density being multiplied or divided so this one is uh, you know absolute uh, pressure so you you have it in pascals here but this one you have uh, the pressure is actually uh, the absolute pressure divided by the density that's why you have this sort of different dimensions here the same applies for pimple foam as well okay so these are the few things you must take note of okay uh, I can close this file using BW because I opened two files again the PRGH dimensions must also be uh, Two uh, meter square per second squared. All right, in uh, for buoyant businesse pimple foam as compared to buoyant pimple foam, which is uh, in Pascal's QA. Okay.
Okay, I assume you know how to do all this VI stuff, so I won't be going through that. Okay, the other thing you must uh, take note of is your system directory. Okay, so beware the boundary conditions, beware of system directory, and in there you need to have a few uh, other entries, such as one you need to include using T inside the solvers here. T and T final must be included. All right. Uh, also, you, you need it here and also in the relaxation factors. So that's one. And uh, syst go to system FV schemes. All right. You'll need to have divergence of uh, phi and T to be uh, included in these divergence schemes. So that's uh, FE schemes and FE solutions for you. Um, time is up, but uh, last one, uh, last last few things. Uh, you need to have a transport properties file instead of thermal physical properties because buoyant boostiness can be performed. We'll use transport properties instead of thermal physical properties. And over here, you you can determine your uh, laminar viscosity, your beta, your thermal expansion coefficient. So um, you don't um, usually uh, define your absolute. Uh, density here it's a uh, kind of uh, done relatively speaking okay so you define uh, you define your uh, kinematic viscosity your beta and your tref will determine how your uh, density changes over time okay this this part you don't need uh, I'll just putting that there for reference okay you can define your laminar your normal parental number and your turbulent parental number as well so that's important. Unfortunately, the uh, open foam doesn't seem to have a way to have this parental number change with temperature. So that's one limitation of buoyant boussinesc pimple foam. The other thing is that uh, buoyant boussinesc pimple foam uh, it does not uh, it does not work by default with CHD multi region foam. Okay. There is some there is a limitation where buoyant pussiness pimple form uh, uh with buoyant pussiness pimple form because it does not work with CHT multi-region foam. CHT multi-region foam uses uh, a buoyant pimple foam solver in its background to solve for fluid regions. So that's gonna be kind of problematic for us. So but this actually goes to show that uh buoyant pussiness pimple foam is uh is a workable solution for uh, uh, geometries with abrupt changes in in the in the edges. Like you see, you have uh, pipes with sharp corners and everything. Uh, Boyan business pimple foam is able to solve for all these uh, issues, right? It's able to solve for the you no know, sharp bends and sharp corners. Okay, so the question is. Uh, how can we make buoyant pimple foam behave in a similar stable manner as compared to buoyant boussinesque pimple foam? All right. Um, so that's the you know, going to be the subject of exploration for the next video, and I'll see you guys next time. And of course, I'll post this research kit publication in the uh, in the uh, references in in the description below. So thanks for watching. See you guys again. Bye-bye.